Thank you for watching Ben Television. The program is You Decide, and I'm glad you are watching. What we do here is we give you information, we give you facts, we give you analysis. But at the end of the day, you decide. I'm so glad you're watching. Um, we have in the studio today, as usual, uh, the gentleman, uh, Nat Iyakwa, who is uh, our in-house researcher. Nat, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much, and good morning, everybody. Yes, uh, also all the way from Milan, our man in Italy, Mark Godwin. Mark, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Dr. Shagun. Good morning to the viewers. Thank you. Yeah, so glad to see your face, and you are, you're very smart today, Mark. Anything going on there in Italy, you think uh, we want to share something today? Is a uh, happy birthday or what or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... um. It's a little bit sunny, and um, okay. the, the sun is also like a symbol to a new start in Italy. So, oh. um, yeah, the faces of people are lightening up. There is uh, a new kind of uh, atmosphere, lively atmosphere here in Milan because activities have begun. You know, it's 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 gradually picking up. So. Okay. That is I'm why on my, I'm on my way to Milan. Please let it be. You're welcome. Let it be You're welcome. when I come. <laughs> oh, well, not the British elections have come and gone. We now have, uh, we, know, we know the London mayor and uh, he's been returned, Sadiq Khan. He didn't have it easy. Sean Bello gave him all the challenges of his life and uh, he didn't even look very happy when he was uh, making his. Uh, a declaration statement uh, of a victory. He was looking gloomy. He, I, I guess he was shocked that the, it has to go to a second run and uh, he he was almost pulverized in different parts. And uh, uh, no, many people in London were expecting Sean Bailey to win. Uh, but the analyst said, well, Sean Bailey was going to lose by a large margin. So it, it, looks, it looks like uh, there were too many contradictions uh, at the end of the day, Sadiq Khan was returned, but we have a strong analysis to make concerning this past election because uh, we've seen how London has been thoroughly divided now between Sadiq Khan of Labour and Sean Bailey of uh, the Conservatives. And uh, it appears that uh, Sean Bailey will be the next rising star. And uh, if you look at the elections across the nation, it appeared that the conservatives won more council seats. But when you look at the places where Boris Johnson was challenged in the last one year, he never made any at all, nor his party. Take, for example, the uh, Scottish election. You will see that the SNP, Scottish Nationalist Party, even did stronger, only one seat shy of the majority in the Holyrood. And if you look at Wales, Labour even got more than necessary majority. So when you look at places where the mayors have stood up to Boris Johnson in the last one year, you cannot deal with us when you are not dealing with them in London like that. Places like Manchester, Liverpool, Midlands, we saw that Labour took all the mayors except two. And so Boris Johnson has been challenged in all those areas where he has been thoroughly challenged. You lost out of it, but where Kistama, the Labour leader, has been a bit of slow and slow in London, Boris Johnson took all over where those seats, where Kistama should have been. And uh, well, let me leave it to uh, Nat to tell us more. It, it, it depends on how you see this election result, but the way it is that Boris Johnson lost grip anywhere he's challenged, where nobody's challenging him, he appeared to be winning very well. Nat, what's your opinion? Well, my, my, my opinion is that the these elections have come and gone, but it, is, it, it seems to have been, been a very dull election. And it, it seems, good. yeah, and it seems that um, uh, some people some people predicted the result we got at the end of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it, it, to start with, it was like, it's like a two horse race, uh, Sit can the sitting mayor and then uh, the Tory party uh, okay. candidate being Sean Bailey. 
Uh, and so the 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 the, the COVID also play, was a factor uh, that 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 came into play uh, because you, the the country has been under lockdown for one year plus. Uh, the, these elections were supposed to have held last year May, but uh, because of the COVID, the elections could not hold. So the COVID was was a limit to the publicity. Uh, they could give uh, apart from the print and electronic media. And if you didn't have a deep pocket, you cannot go on national television like Sky, um, BBC, or, 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 or a bus ride, London bus ride, like <laughs> candidate. I, I, couldn't, I didn't see any other candidate do a, a London uh, bus ride, uh, the red buses. Uh, again, so the, the 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 again the 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 election result confirmed that London is a country within a country, uh, mm. uh, because London has it seems for some time to come, Labour will always uh, win the, the elections in London. But when you step outside the bureaus of London, when you go to Wales or you go to Manchester or Liverpool or Scotland. Uh, Labour seems to still be very strong there, but, but, but one other one other factor that came in uh, the, the immediate last the immediate past Labour uh, leader uh, what's his name again Jeremy Corbyn yeah Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn Jeremy Corbyn's performance in office had a serious <laughs> challenge. For the press, present man, star man, uh, uh, in, in the performance of labor in the elections, and uh, so, and we, yeah, we, we, but, we but seriously speaking, do you think Estema uh, was right in uh, reshuffling his cabinet, dropping some, and uh, he being retained because he appears to be a little bit too conservative for that position? Uh, he is not behaving like a labor leader to challenge the incumbent governor, uh, that is incumbent prime minister, effectively in the House of Parliament. He's not appearing to have alternatives that people could lash onto. Most of the time, he's voting alongside with the government. Most of the time, he is uh, moving away from voting, even at all. So the government is just having its way. Now they even lost Hartlepool. So instead of 80 extra parliamentary seats, now conservatives have 81 parliamentary seats, and they are likely to lose another one because a mayor, a Labour mayor, has won and may now leave the parliament. So is, is it the, is it for the uh, Labour leader to just uh, reshuffle his cabinet, or he himself should go? Well, uh, I, I, it, it seems the, the, the new Labour leader has not been in office for uh, too long a period of time. And coming uh, and following immediately it was the COVID uh, period. But the, the, the problem with the Labour man, the star, star man, you mm -hmm. know, they, are, they were colleagues in Oxford with um, Boris, Boris Johnson. <laughs> so it's and old the, boys uh, way of old thinking. boys association yeah government, government by classmates of classmates and he, mm -hmm. he couldn't be seen to be opposing boris johnson uh too much if not they will discipline him at the boys club okay they, we have to come back to that let's hear from milan how did you okay. receive the uh mayoral result in europe because everybody was looking at it who's going to be the next mayor who's going to be the next mayor so mark how did you receive it and uh, how did you see our man ninzo bungi perform oh dear yeah well yes we we are following it up here uh our readers were all on their lats uh mm -hmm. but when we found out that uh, they, they said there was confusing ballot paper being played for the number of rejected uh, votes, um, that Massive was the record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was very confused. That was not too good. Um, about a hundred and fourteen thousand uh, votes were rejected on that Thursday. But uh, anyway, uh, Sadiq Khan has has won. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, he has won. Uh, it's it's they said he's going to spend only three years, uh, not four. Uh, yes, 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 because he 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 enjoyed one extra year also, 
due to the COVID uh, situation. So um, it's um, it's uh, it's uh, it's good that the, uh, an awareness is growing now for a change, but um, it didn't work out the way we all thought. I, I was in for Sean Bailey anyway, and um, uh, our man also, uh, our man Obunga. We we hope he will pull up next time and bring more um, more dynamism and probably get the votes. But for now, we yeah, have to... He, yeah, yeah. He, he, at the end of the day, pulled 9,000 plus votes. Yes, 9, uh, all the votes counted together. Uh, Sadiq Khan, 1 million plus. Uh, Shambeli, 900,000 plus. But what what were you think? I was thinking he's going to pull more than that. I mean, there yes. are so millions of Nigerians in London. Yes, and, and this still shows that we people need to come out when it's time for mm. such things. The, 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 the uh, attendance is still low on the African, Nigerian, and African side. So um, there is still work to be done. M more awareness, more reasons why they should come cast their vote. You know, a lot of time we, we say it prior to the election, but when it's that time, you find out that people just lay back and they feel my, it's still, they, they just lay back and uh, mm. it's, uh, they, they, this didn't help uh, our man. So, but um, one thing he should be doing from now till the, the next one is really create more awareness and tell people, give people the reasons, the facts, why they should be involved in the vote, why they should come out in mass when it's time for election. And, uh, I agree with you. While that is important, we also need to have the understanding that, uh, that concentrating too much on social media doesn't win votes. It is going to the doors, knocking on the doors, speaking to people that make people uh, vote. Uh, that, that has been my, uh, my experience. Uh, I mean, Labour and Conservative parties and all the big parties, they have the foot soldiers knocking on doors, talking to people, trying mm. to change the minds of people. Now, mm. if you don't have that as an independent, there's yes. no way that you will make a headway. Uh, very, very, good. Is, uh, very good, Dr. Shagun. Now, let me add that uh, election is about numbers. Election is about numbers, figures. So... Um, uh, we're not totally ruling out the social platform because this is the new wave now. But, but like you said, the foot soldiers, they really move being there on the ground and go meeting out, reaching out to people, networking strongly. You know, there was a time, um, the one time presidential candidate in America, Hillary Clinton, said it's, it's a very rough job to, to be mm. out there campaigning. It's a tough one. It's um, it's it's uh, very very. She also said it's very very dehumanizing because you meet people. Some people will even beat you, slap you, tell you, throw eggs at you. You know. So um, our man need to the black the black uh, candidates, mayoral candidate need to learn that, and also in all com communities in uh, Europe, they need to know that they have to get out there, talk to the people rub shoulders with them, drink with them if possible, argue with them, talk with them, get out there, and also couple it up with the social platforms. Thank you. Okay, let me, thank, thank you, thank you, Mark, that's superb. Um, um, uh, let me ask uh, Nat, we have another Nigerian there who was there, Umila no. Um, uh, it, he, he, he appeared, he, he pulled 41,000 votes uh, that accounted for one percent, I believe. Uh, who is this Nigerian? Do you know? And uh, he appeared to have done very well, and uh, it's not known to people like me. Well, I, I, I don't know much of him, too, but the, 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 the name sounds uh, familiar, and again, if you look at maybe his social network. Uh, because our people like this social networking, uh, attending housewarming, marriages, naming ceremonies, parties, uh, and so many other social events. Uh, but because if, if he had been in, in the social media, we would have maybe had 
uh, about him, but really very little is known about him as an individual. Okay. Um, well, we will just leave it there. Uh, we now have uh, uh, our mayor in London. That's very important, not only to the Londoners, but also to everyone because of the financial capital situation of our dear city. And uh, of course, the Queen gave a message yesterday and so many things were discussed, but we will not have enough time to go into that because uh, they are doing justice to that and on other forums. Uh, we we'll just want to look at what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, we have seen in the last one week serious clashes between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Uh, we understand that uh, the Temple Mount has been the main issue, as we are told. Uh, the Israelis want to move some Palestinians out of East Jerusalem, where many of the Palestinians have settled. I've been there personally. I've been to that area of Jerusalem, and it's like an Arab city. I mean, the food, the restaurants, the people. And you go to the other side, you see all the Jews. So I think uh, they've been living together fairly well until now. Uh, they have described this war as one of the terrible ones uh, they've seen in the many years past. But then uh, we hope that things will de-escalate. But uh, Nat, can you bring us up to date? What's all this hula-baloo about again? Well, I think what, what, what has been happening or what we have witnessed the past two weeks is really, it's really not new. It's, a, it, mm. it's just a build-up to what has happened in the past uh, and and the future doesn't really look better than what we, we we are seeing now especially when it comes to this issue of recognizing israel as a, an independent state and recognizing jerusalem as the capital of israel uh, and the palestinians are also laying claim uh, to the same east jerusalem as uh, their own capital but we know that Donald Trump moved the capital of, of Israel from Tel Aviv to to to. You mean you mean he Jerusalem. moved the, the embassy, the embassy? Yes. Well, the, the embassy by implication, embassies are supposed to be in the state capital, not in. Yeah, but he could not move the he could not move the capital. He's, he's an American, and I mean, he he had the power to move the embassy, and he did. But well, did that... he, historically. He's been there for years, but no, no, no. Most of the American president, when the date arrived, they just shift the the date maybe by another six months or another <laughs> one year. <laughs> and Political so it, correctness, isn't it? Yes, it, it, and so, oh, no, this has this been a historical struggle that has been on struggle for land, struggle for recognition, and and, and, and struggle for. For independence, and we you, we can eat, we can eat also, and the always the challenge, the trouble has always started at the Temple Mount. It always mm -hmm. had always started at the Western Wall. The problem has always started around the Alaska uh, Mosque, and so it, it, it's an ongoing thing. We no, no, what's so special about this Temple Mount and the Alaska Mosque? The, the the Muslims went to build this mosque on their holy ground, and some people say even it's not a particularly holy ground, but some people believe it is the holy ground, and it's going to cause war and mayhem, especially as the end time has come by the prophecies. Do we, what do we need to know more? What, what, what do we need to know more is this issue of where the present Alaska mosque is standing, the foundation which is standing. Some people believe that that is where the Solomon's temple, the, yes. the temple that yeah. Solomon built, they think the mosque is standing on that foundation. But there's another school of thought that, that it may not be the same spot uh, where Solomon's temple was, it just a little bit made to the north, so some, some few uh, uh, meters or so. Uh, but the, the 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 struggle has been on, and, and uh, uh, be, because also that is linked with the politics, not only within the Middle East, but also the politics in America. Uh, most American presidents 
we always want to be very close allies to, to, to Israel, especially their strategic position in, in, the, in the Middle East. And currently what we have in Israel, politically, Benjamin Netanyahu is just there more like a caretaker uh, prime minister now. They, they have had four elections in two years and nobody has come out to win the elections. And the Palestinians think that this, this, this opportunity of um, a time gap of no stable government in, in Israel, they could intensify their fight or intensify their, their struggle. Uh, but we want, we want to see what happens in the next few days, few weeks, and even months to come. Okay, thank you. Mark, should we be afraid of anything? The United Nations said this could escalate into a full blown out war. Should we be afraid? Well, um, like, like Dr. Nat said, um, the, the situation with Israel and Palestinians is not a new thing. But for the past seven years, there have been this, um, there have been this calm, calm and uh, ceasefire situation. So this new intensified um, uh, uh, action since last week is, uh, is very, very um, alarming because um, Hamas is targeting Israel offices in Gaza. You know, the, the Gaza city also is a border with the Palestinians and the Israelis. So um, rockets have been fired. We also saw videos of massive firing of rockets. Thank God for the, what they call Iron Dome. The Iron Dome by the uh, Israelis could um, uh, pick a rocket and squash it, you know? It just... So, and, it, and it has been very effective in the last few hours. It's been yes, very effective. very effective. If not for that, there will be, there will be more casualties. But uh, so far, 30 deaths on the Palestinian side and uh, from the Israeli side. Um, it's including children. That's the sad part. In Gaza, they said there are 35 uh, Palestinians, including children that were killed. Let, let, last let me ask you a crucial question. Is the yes, United sir. Nations the organization that will uh, settle this problem, or you think the United Nations is a toothless bulldog? Straight up, doctor. Straight up, the United Nations is a toothless bulldog. You see, this is why, uh, so at some point, you want to reason with Trump, the former United States president. At some mm -hmm. point, you see that he has, he has his uh, reasons for some actions. United Nations has lived out its usefulness. Let's be honest. Dr. Nath mm -hmm. was saying something before we came to the studio. And um, th that's a fact. United Nations is no more what it stands for. Now, mm -hmm. it, is, it is almost like a political organization. It is no more that organization that should really um, mediate, negotiate, settle and do all things for the humanity as they said they, they should. So um, you were saying something that's vital, Dr. Shagun, and that's that what we're seeing now is a, from the Christian side, is a biblical prophecy that is happening. Um, we all know what the Bible says, uh, for those of us that read the Bible, about this situation. So these are these are things that have been beforehand for, uh, foretold, and uh, yes, we are seeing it live. Yeah, now. and uh, for those who read the Bible, they say it talks about the desolation or desecration of uh, the temple site the temple. and yes. the abomination. And, and, yes, and, and that's and, 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 uh, it, it's like uh, we are moving fast towards that one, and it will lead to seven years of tribulation across yes. the globe. I think this tribulation of pandemic is not enough. Uh, and now we're going to move now from pandemic to the tribulation that nobody wants to go through because it's going to affect the whole world. Who would have imagined that the pandemic will encircle the whole globe in two months? So you cannot imagine the tribulation that they say will take seven years. And uh, maybe we need to come and go and revisit such prophecies and parts of the Bible when the whole yes. world will be serious too much. Uh, mm -hmm. The way we think, it, it looks like the pandemic uh, was a rehearsal of the tribulation that is coming. Yeah. And to think of it, Mount Meron, 
people were killed on Mount Meron a few weeks ago, and we were all mourning and very sad. Now another month is causing trouble in Israel. How many mountains are there in Israel? That we are having all these challenges. If not Mount Ararat, it will be Mount Sinai or Mount. What so, the only yes. Mount that is good in that place is Mount Zion. Yes, and that's no, no, Ararat. Let, let me also say something. Yes, you're you're going very deep now, Doctor. I see that you're a pastor, <laughs> really. Um, <laughs> the, right. the Israel, the Israel uh, Palestinian situation is very is very is, is it like you said earlier. It's a discussion that could take a whole day, you know, because mm. it's been there. Uh, also, um, <coughs> we, we, you, you have so many times there are conflicting situations on this issue. Um, as I yesterday in the news, right inside Israel, some Israelis don't don't like what they, it's happening inside Israel. You know, some yeah. Are yeah. complaining that um, uh, that, the, that the, the 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 attack and the heavy bombardment from the Israel side is not uncalled for. So it's just all mixed up uh, emotion. And this comes to what you're saying. The, the, the Bible says that, that land will never know peace until Jesus comes. It will always wow. be like this. this. It will be every day, one of the situation, this happening, that happening. And now we're seeing what uh, the news just said a couple of hours ago, something that might become a full-blown war. Israel said, and yeah. when the Middle East is boiling, the rest of the world cannot sit down. Now, That's it. Uh, in, very, in very quick second, Nat, uh, I will look up onto the hills from whence cometh my help. Is this a serious global prophetic challenge? Uh, the Bible says, uh, I, don't, I don't think everybody goes to church, but the Bible says, Upon Mount Zion shall be deliver us. What do you say, Nat, in one minute? We don't have much time. Well, from, from my background where I'm coming from, you know, this challenge, this crisis, the conflict uh, over the control of Jerusalem will, will, will not end until Jesus Christ comes back. And incidentally or coincidentally, Jerusalem, Salem, Salem is from Shalom, peace. Shalom, peace. But that yes. is the city that has never known peace. In its history, <laughs> and uh, and uh, the the Israeli ambassador on the British television here says that they are going to defend their territory, and yes. so and the Palestinians are not giving up. So uh, we can only pray. Uh, the, the Bible says that pray for the peace of Jerusalem because there's no way Jerusalem is in turmoil. You think you are far away in Africa or in Australia. You shouldn't look for the peace. So, and in the last 50 years, uh, the Palestinians, if not in the last 2,000 years, that area called Middle East have always been the center of uh, trouble for the international politics. Uh, talk yes. about uh, 1948 coming together mm -hmm. of the Israeli and, nation. And, and, yes. and, and this also will be a test for Biden. You know, this is uh, a, a test of his uh, strength and uh, his ability to hold the world as America has always done. So the, the Palestinians are trying to, this whole thing is coming up because of so many reasons. And one yeah. of them, it's a test for better by the president. I agree with you. I know President Trump will have gone one way or the other. He will have yeah. been decisive. Uh, unfortunately, Joe Biden is the one in charge. So we'll be looking at how he will do it from the establishment point of view. We'll go on a short break when we return. Crisis, crisis, crisis in Asorok. Can you believe that petty thieves broke into Asorok? Or was it just a hop? Don't go away. We'll, we'll be right back after this short break. Ben's Television has been going for almost two decades now, representing the African, Caribbean, and ethnic communities in the diaspora, especially based in the United Kingdom. We have been providing content, various programs to empower, make an intervention, deliver and enlighten the mainstream community about what it is to be a BAME in the United Kingdom. For almost two decades, this has been our Eaters, Bridging the Gap. 
Now we seek for your support and partnership in delivering what we need to achieve in the coming generation for our youth, either through training, mentorship, empowerment for their entrepreneurial skill, talent, and in their business. Ben Television, Bridging the Gap, you're welcome to be with us. Thank you very much for joining and being partners of Ben TV, creating that bridge between the mainstream and the other communities in the United Kingdom and in Europe. Gang Story Magazine is an African international bi-monthly magazine based in Milan, Italy and founded in 2016. The publication focuses on personalities, fashion, style, entrepreneurship, and culture for Africans. The articles on food, movies, fitness, music, travel, sports, technology, and books are also featured. Our lives full of best stories. A lot can happen in a month. Expand your mind, change your world. It's Shen Gen Story Magazine's full editions. Celebrate an African's make an impact. Read better, the inside story. Your fashion magazine for a better lifestyle. Inspiring stories for you. Your monthly dose of entertainment. A better mind keeping you updated. Hashtag Shengen Story Magazine. Get Shengen Story Magazine full editions. Thanks for staying with us. The program is you decide. We give you information, facts, and analysis, but you decide. Now, we've been told of this story on the 9th of May 2021 that burglars burgled uh, the residences of the secretary to the, uh, is it the, the, the office of uh, Sulu Gambari, I guess is the chief of staff of President Buhari, and they uh, got away with cash. And they also went to one of the administrative staff called Abubaka Mekanu, and they boggled his residence. And these are within the precincts of uh, President Buhari's uh, villa Asorok. We've been told also before, don't forget that there were gunshots in Asorok, and uh, nothing has happened. We've not had anything. Is the is the what's the situation? Is the is this thing getting closer to the main seat of the Nigerian? presidency. Uh, Nat, please bring us up to date on what happened on the 9th of May in, the, in two houses very close to where President Buhari was sleeping. You know, I, I, I think for a, a better scenario or picture of um, where this incident took place uh, mm -hmm. in, in the villa or Asorok, as some people call it, the, the presidential villa is, is located in an area called the Three Arms Zone. And the Three Arms are the National Assembly, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, representing judiciary, and then the executive arm represented by the presidential uh, uh, villa. And mm -hmm. we, we have had so many incidences uh about the villa that are really not very clear to most nigerians because not too far ago uh gariba shehu one of the presidential spokesperson told us that there was uh, there was fire in the villa and the explanation we got was that there is um there, there was somebody smoke somebody smoking passed by and maybe <laughs> dropped the cigarette <laughs> And that's funny. 
<laughs> yeah, the place caught fire. You see, but the 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 Aso Villa happens to be the most fort is the most fortified uh, place in Nigeria because the president stays there. The the the, the security is high. It is tight, and and you you cannot penetrate. And we have three main uh, layers of security into the villa. You have the the DSS gate. We have the brigade of guards. The brigade of guards, which is uh, top crack soldiers guiding the 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 uh, the president. And, and so the story we are hearing of. Uh, at attempted some people say it's attempted some people say burglary took place in uh abdukadir mekanu's uh house abdukadir mekanu is one of the administrative officers one of the closest officers to uh, buhari and then the chief of staff to buhari himself professor gambari the the, the 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 locations are if you know the villa very well the locations are on Ibrahim Taiwo Road and it's not outside the villa it's within the villa and wow. so for, yeah it's within the villa uh I, I have a mental picture of where the the that uh, robbery took place but the problem we have is with not only that incident, but with this government, there is no strategic way of communicating to the people. The communication is very poor because Shehu Garba said foolish attempt were made. But some other officials said burglary took place. And so the question <laughs> yeah, semantics, the question, semantics, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so the question we'll be asking uh, is it the same villa or there's a second villa which most Nigerians don't know? Uh, and then, if that is happening to the president, then there should be questions you'll be asked, we should have correct answers, and then some heads should roll. Mm -hmm. At one time, Aisha Buhari had to leave the villa for six months because of she said security, she didn't feel secured. But for this to happen. And again, we were, we were told two weeks ago that uh, Boko Haram was just some few kilometers away in Niger State. And we were told that uh, the, the Abuja has been ringed round with Nigerian police and the military. So where did the daredevil robbers, how did they get into the villa? Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the most- and, and no, no, no head has rolled so far. No, no head have rolled so far. Garba said uh, the, 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 the people who attempted to boggle the Gambari's house were caught on camera. But thereafter, he deleted that uh, statement from his Twitter handle. And, and so we Nigerians are waiting. Two days, three days has passed. I, I don't know how long it's going to take the police to do any investigation. But this let is me a, ask, yeah. let, let me ask Mark in Milan. Mark, yes. should we be afraid for the life of Mr. President? If they could be that close to him, should we be seriously afraid? He was staying in the house, probably sleeping at that time. And uh, we understand that uh, Gambari and Mekano couldn't stay in their house anymore since then. So should we be afraid for his life now? Yeah, yes, Dr. Shago. It's... Um... It's, it's a very serious situation happening there. Um, the the uh, Shehu Garba, the presidential spokesman, is not giving us the full uh, story. Uh, moreover, that, that incident happened on on Sunday, uh, Sunday night. But Monday, you, Monday morning, Monday three morning, three a.m. Uh, yes, early morning, Monday early morning. But it took it took Shew uh, Gariba. It took him some time to own up. Meanwhile, the news started flittering on the social platform. It started flit, uh, moving on the social platform before he came out. To now, confirm that yes, so 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 thing happened, and they they played with the words. They didn't say yes, it happened. Some people got the facts. The the, the fact is that a butler. A butler in, the, in that uh, section of the building gave out the news to news people. And uh, Sheo Garuba came in the evening. 
to confirm that yes, yeah, so 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 so, but it's an attempt attempted robbery, it failed and all that. But um the, the butler that gave the information said cash was taken out. So we, we got it in Monday Monday. I got the news Monday midday, and uh, I got it from Twitter, a, a confidant in t- on Twitter, and um, we 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 know that our people can can really source out news. So yeah, to be afraid of this situation, and uh, some they need to face the reality. See, this is that problem we have, Doctor Shabu. Our leaders, those in in this power presently are not they they, they 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 they're always lying they're always giving half half truth half of statements and it doesn't help them it doesn't help anybody so why not That's just right. say the truth and we begin to find solution you know they don't want to look weak they don't want to look like ah this thing is coming to them too so but and that's the fact before you and that know, takes us to the next item anyway uh, yes, fake sir. news all over the place. Somebody just woke up uh, uh, and uh, gave a fake news that there's going to be another lockdown in Nigeria and there is uh, a, 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 there's a new variant that is killing many and there's going to be a lockdown and it went, it went viral and the whole nation was taken in such a fear that it had to necessitate the federal government to bring out its own counter uh, social media announcement that does nothing like that uh, and it's just a fake news uh, and so we are into a serious problem fake news and uh, fake uh, in, uh, people just making so many things up uh, and uh, is in a place where there are no serious governance uh, that's what watch this uh, watch this uh, uh, video clip as the federal government tries to uh, erase the effect of the fake news about uh, uh, another lockdown. This is very important for everyone to know. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Sani Ali. I'm the national coordinator for the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Uh, we are aware of a fake message, message that's been uh, going around on WhatsApp that we've declared uh, a lockdown of the country. This is absolutely not true. Um, I'm calling on the general public to please ignore this message and uh, continue with their normal activities. I'm also calling on the public to make sure that we abide by our non-pharmaceutical interventions, including uh, wearing a face mask in public, uh, washing hands and um, keeping your physical distance. There's an established way that we send out messages to the public, including declarations when it comes to infection control. So please ignore what's been going around on WhatsApp. Thank you. Now, at least for the very first time, uh, the federal government quickly responded to a fake news, which uh, Mark was alluding to, that if we could have uh, uh, the federal government and those in power to quickly re- respond to issues like these, uh, it will be a better place. What do you say? We, we, we have also known the federal government to come out and say a news is fake when it is true. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yeah. Uh, that's very because the, the Honorable Minister for Information, Lai Mohammed, has done it's not used to such a game. Mm. When the government uh, goofs or, or, or says something uh, accidentally or incidentally, he comes out and says it's fake news while it is true. Because the, the, the Dr. Sani Aliu, the man who was on that picture, doesn't look like the actual man. Very good. Let, let me yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nat. Uh, Dr. Shagun, that, that, yeah. that news, the news, the initial WhatsApp news is true. What you just played now is the fake news. I sent, um, I just tweeted something now. Um, <laughs> the, yes, the video, uh, Shew, uh, Sonia Liu is in the UK now, presently in the UK. Mm-hmm. Yes, I spoke with somebody in his office. And his, th- that video is an old video. That's not, uh, it's an old thing. So if you go to the NCDC Twitter handle, it is there that this that video should not be f- adhered to. So you, this, this all comes to how clueless and confused our leaders, present leaders are. 
<laughs> we don't know what he, we, we can't have an authentic source of information. This one we talk, this one we talk. The WhatsApp message that was circulating on the uh, COVID uh, lockdown is true because for like I got it from uh, Channels TV in Lagos. But in, I think that because of the pressure from the South South governors and some other arms of uh, uh, the, the nation, they refuted that message and said, okay, so, and it all turned out that it, they came out with something and said that what some message is fake. But that message you just played now is what is fake. Yes. So the, 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 the message <laughs> is trying to say one is fake is fake, and then the fake news is now being taken as the, the original news, and the original okay. news is now fake, as far as the federal government is fake. And so we have a combination of fake government, fake news, fake other news. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, Dr. 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 Johnson? Um, yeah, yes. let me just let me just say uh, before I, I was still speaking, what is actually happening? The the there is a COVID nineteen third wave in Nigeria. Mm. Take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah, take it or leave it. And why they are afraid? Why why they have talked of lockdown is the Ramadan is finishing today. Their salad starts tomorrow. Okay, and it is, link it, and it link is it, always link after these ceremonies that the wave just jumps up, and then we okay. have this this challenge of the South African variant of the, the, the virus, which we are told is very, very, very vicious and very lethal uh, and, mut and mut uh, mutates uh, quickly, uh, and it is is in Nigeria, and then the Indian uh, the Indian experience. Those who went for the festival, Ganji River Festival, are back in Nigeria, and then we have we have the other challenges coming from Turkey, and the government doesn't want to close down our airspace because this. Okay, okay, okay. Nat, tell us, uh, how will they celebrate the Salah? Will it will it be social distancing? Will it be face mask? Or you think the Muslims in Nigeria are going to say, "Look, we want to enjoy and celebrate." This is not the first time we have had salad during pandemic. Last year, we had the same problem. The Sultan of Sokoto, who is the head of all Muslims in Nigeria, gave a direct instruction that people shouldn't go to ED prayer ground. But the governors did a different thing. Everybody went out. Uh, the, okay. president, the president has said, no celebrations. Everybody should stay in his house. But people will still go out. Wow. And that's the what caused the problem in India. Yes. So it's festivals, ceremonies, no social distancing, no face mask. And Nigerians had said COVID is gone. And some say it was never even there in the first place. Now, let's try and look for good news for Nigeria. I mean, let's bring our viewers some good news. I'm telling you, I don't want to be depressed by this fake people of fake news and fake country news there. Let's try and see. They understand that uh, the children of Lagos, they have uh, looked for a way to take their mind off bad governance and they now go into games like chess. That they play chess games now and I tell you, you don't really know what these children will become. Uh, so in far away uh, suburbs of Lagos, people, where you will never imagine they will be playing chess uh, and where you will never imagine uh, that uh, such things will be happening in Nigeria. They've been doing Let's watch this video as uh, people have gone to the slums and they've seen that the game of chess is working. Michael Omoyole is a budding young chess player who lives in Nigeria's slums. He practices at home in a room with concrete walls marked with water stains and peeling blue paint. Omoyele was inspired by the 2016 film Queen of Katwi about a girl who escapes poverty in a Kenyan slum through chess. The 14-year-old says he hopes the game will do the same for him. To live here is hard and I take many processes to survive. Sometimes no food, scarcity of food, and you sometimes work in order to get food to eat. 
and from winning chess games, I believe I can do more better in becoming the champion and being wealthy also. Omoyele practices with dozens of other children in the Majidu neighborhood of Lagos. Playing on plastic mats printed with chessboards, they're intently focused and overseen by 26-year-old Babatunde Onokoya. Nigeria is in a crisis because 30 million children cannot afford to be in school. So this is why we are teaching them chess you know, as a way to raise a new generation of, of intellectuals. People, children that will be curious enough to question everything, you know, that will be curious enough to, to innovate. Onokoya founded Chess in Slums Africa in 2018. He says the game helped him rise from his own deprived childhood in Lagos, and now he hopes to do the same for other children across the continent. So through chess, you know, we hope to unlock the potential of these children, get them off the streets, get them back to school, and help set a new trajectory for their lives. Something good is coming out of Nigeria. I remember uh, David Oyelo doing that film, uh, fantastic film from Kenya, how a young lady and a young family, they all went on this uh, trip of uh, chess playing, and it was fantastic. Uh, if that could uh, inspire our young men, I tell you, someone, someone young as 10 has been involved in playing these same chairs. Rose from Nigeria. <laughs> Parents ran away from Nigeria, went to the United States. And today, he becomes the chess master of the USA. Uh, you need to watch this man called Tani. He's a young man. He's a young man of 10. You need to watch this man called Tani. Please, let's have a look and a taste of Tani played in the United States of America as the boss. A boy from right here in New York City is now America's youngest chess master ever. And get this, he's 10 years old. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles. This one is the, I think this is the young reader's edition. At the age of 10, Tani Odwimi is a published author and the youngest chess master in the country. Not an easy distinction earned at any age. He appeared on Good Morning America Monday morning. So how I first came to chess was definitely back in Nigeria, where I saw my dad's computer. And I saw this app, it was just called Chess. I didn't really know what it was, I just looked at it for like, what, one minute, then I left. But when we came to America, I actually played on a real board with my brother. We first met Tanny two years ago, when at the age of eight, he won the New York State Chess Championship in the K through third grade division. At that time, his family was living in a Manhattan homeless shelter. His father, a successful business owner and Christian in Nigeria, was forced to suddenly flee the country after being hunted by the Islamic extremist group Boko Haram. Tanny's 2019 championship win brought an outpouring of support and a GoFundMe page raised more than $250,000 to help the family get on their feet. After school, I, pr I play every day. Like I just play for the whole time. An after school pastime turned passion turned chess master. It feels very wonderful, feels very good because I've been trying to get it for some time now since the pandemic, so it feels very relieving to get the time. Tanny's brilliance even impressing former president Bill Clinton. Now the family is hoping to develop and inspire other young minds, has started a foundation to help kids learn and participate in chess tournaments. This as the prodigy sets his sights on a new goal. Me becoming grandmaster. Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Channel 7 there. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Nat, do you know how to play chess? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I better take you. I, I'm paying your next I'm paying your next airfare to America straight to Tani's <laughs> house. He will accommodate you and teach you chess uh, because it's, it looks like it's the next thing in Nigeria, isn't it? Yes. yes. I, I, but, mm -hmm. but I think it's really not the location. It is the individual that, that, that matters. Uh, playing mm -hmm. chess, you need some level of intelligence. You need some level of dexterity. You, 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 need, you, need, you have to be strategic and calculated. So wherever you might take Tani as he is now, 
even if you take him to Afghanistan or <laughs> Iraq, he will still be a master chess player. And one more addition, the, 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 the challenge we have in Nigeria and five other parts of the world, we now have this digital divide, the analog mm. and the digital, the old school and the, 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 the new school. We don't know Mark, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's thank it. you very much, Nat. Mark, we've been told that Nigerians are not the problem, but leaders in Nigeria are the problem. It looks like most Nigerians are making it all over the world. Only the leaders are failing them at home. What do you say? Very correct, Dr. Shagun. Um, very, that, that's so true. Uh, obviously, the, the environment in Nigeria, the um, factors in Nigeria does not... Um, it, it doesn't encourage um, excellence that much. In fact, mm -hmm. we give kudos to Nigerians that have been able to do a lot of uh, exploits inside Nigeria because they, they really went beyond. They should be applauded. The young men in sports, in movie making, in Hollywood, in uh, uh, everything, these young youth, these young men and ladies have really shown um, how very, very, very uh, resilient and determined and powerful they are. The, the environment doesn't encourage. I mean, a lot of us left because we we couldn't stand that 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 very um, this this encouraging environment uh, factors there. Uh, let me say something about chess. I play chess. Yes, I play chess. It's a very beautiful game. Um, so are you the master? Are you the master player in uh, Italy? Well, I, 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 I've been waiting to see who can take me out, but no, nobody. <laughs> in the African community oh come on! Yes, man. I, I did. A, I did a competition. Come on, boast a little bit. <laughs> yes, no, really. I, I, I mean, I'm talking about our community, the African uh, community in Italy. I've not seen anybody yet. Ch chess mm. is good because. Um, Chess builds the mind. Chess um, helps your IQ. Chess is a, is a game. In fact, uh, listen to this short story. Do you know that uh, the, 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 there is this uh, mafia clan here in Italy, the mafia family? Do you know that uh, the, the best mafia family in Italy were discovered to be good chess players? So they were able to understand the act of move, moving the, the, the chest, uh, the, the, the pawn, the king, the queen, and all that. And they use that also practically in their business. <laughs> and that's a clan called Indragati. OK, I, OK, wait, wait a minute. Because uh, when you talk about the Italian mafia, I'm a little bit uh, scared. <laughs> OK, <laughs> seriously, uh, Tani, uh, if Tani was to meet uh, either David David Oyelo, the man mm -hmm. who played the main actor in that film, uh, the Nigerian yeah. youth was relating to. Or should meet President Buari. Who of the two do you think he should meet? Well, meeting Buari will do nothing. Um, <laughs> it won't add anything to him. Because in the first place, Tani left Nigeria because of the problem they caused. So uh, going back to meet him and tell him whatever do does not add up to his life. Uh, meeting Oyewole. Oyewole. I've met Oyewole a few times myself. I met yes, Oyewole is, is better. I mean, that's that's a role model for so many people, many young Nigerians and Africans. And uh, Tani is such uh, a gifted child. Tani is, is on his way to the top. Uh, we used to have the Russians as very good chess players. But with Tani, it looks like Africa will soon become good chess players because Tani is, is he's being good in the state has uh, hobnob with the ones in Africa. Look at what is happening in the slums of Majidi. And uh, yeah. oh, you, you are right because uh, it, it will bring about multipliers effect. That's yes. All right. Yes. And, yes. Uh, on, on this occasion, we at you decide we want to give kudos to David Oyelowo. 
you have captured so many things we cannot recant on this program, but so many times uh, they have always been educative, uplifting to the Black Lives Matter. And uh, David Oyelowo, we thank you. And for those who are uh, supporting you in all the roles, all the things you have been made uh, to act, uh, we, we, I can't recall all, but I remember interviewing you on a few occasions on the red carpet. David Oyelowo, thank you for the inspiration you give all our young people in Nigeria. We will go on a short break. When we return, Adiza Bala Usman, suspended, sacked, or what? You need to know the politics going on at the Nigerian Post Authority. But the judge fell at the last stage of uh, uh, Nigerian Post Authority. Adiza Bala Usman has been suspended. You want to listen to all of these. And I tell you, so many good news still about Nigeria. Coming on this program, don't go away, we'll be right back.